What's going on everyone and welcome back to the Rabbit Mining YouTube channel. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to mine Pulsar. Now what is Pulsar? Quick sum up, it is a 50% proof of stake coin as well as a 50% proof of work coin. And what type of proof of work is that? CPUs. <laughs> So I'm going to be showing you guys how to mine this in Windows 10 as well as Hive OS because, you know, depending where you're from or what you prefer, a lot of people like Windows, a lot of people like Hive OS, uh, and I've never tried simple mining those others, but I'm sure you can do it as well. Just to do some, you know, quick exploration here, PulsarCoin.org is the actual address of their website, and they do have some exchanges. So you know what? If you know if things are looking risky or something maybe going bad, it is a brand new coin you can get out. There's Xbitron. As, the, as well as Udonex, 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 Next, something. You know what? Something like that. However you say it, let me know in the comments below. So you're going to want to scroll all the way down here, and I'll try to have most of these links in the description for you. But you're going to need the Pulsar wallet. Now, for Windows, obviously, Windows wallet right here. If you're on Linux, the Linux wallet is here, and we got the Mac OS wallet. They do have a download for the miner. I did not use that. I'm using SRB Multi. You can also use CPU Miner GR, no, not GR, that's Raptorium, CPU Miner Opt, R Plant Fork, but it does have some misreadings. Once you do download and install that wallet, you're gonna wanna click on over to the receiving address here. You're gonna go to a label and just label it anything you want. So just like test video, whatever. You can see here, I just have mine as mining. You're gonna hit that. You can hit enter and it's gonna make your wallet address for you. And then you can just copy your address or whatever else here. Now we're gonna look into the proof of stake side cause it's very, very interesting where it's done through the wallet itself and you don't have to send any type of coins to any type of staking note or anything. You are automatically staking by holding the coins in your own wallet. But setting that up, we'll get to later on the video. First, let's show you how to mine this coin. So you're going to want to head on over to SRB Multi. Again, link in the description. I'm using 0.9.1, but I do see there is a new version now. Now it's not saying anything about uh, Pulsar in general. So that doesn't look like there's anything for, you know, in terms of fix or anything in that point. But head on over here, download the latest version and continue to the next step. Okay, so once you extract SRB miner, you're gonna wanna go down. First thing I always do with any CPU miner is I right click on it, hit properties, go to compatibility, and then run this program as administrator. You always wanna run these miners as an admin. Then if you scroll down, you will see that there actually is no Pulsar coin in the actual miner itself. So I look for a CPU mineable coin. So Raptorium, you can copy this, paste it, and rename it or something. I'm just gonna go into here and edit it like so now we got to change all these uh, parameters around to what we need so i went into our plant we are testing our plant here this has a massive amount of hash rate so we probably shouldn't be using it but you know i still am so a here curve hash so our algorithm is curve hash we're just going to copy this over copy put this in and then we're going to change over ghost rider into curve hash which we just copied Next, we're going to need our pool. So we're going to get rid of supernova that's in here by default. Come back in, get our pool address, the whole stratum plus TCP. Don't forget the S. Make sure you get the whole thing. Uh, maybe I'll just have this whole line down there for you guys. You can fill it in as needed. So we're going to paste that in. And then obviously, we're going to need our wallet address, which we do copy over from our actual wallet. So my wallet is closed. Let me open it up for a second. I got my wallet opened up. You're gonna wanna go over to receive, click on the label you just did make, copy the address, minimize this, and then just paste that into the wallet. Now you're gonna wanna save it. So I'm gonna save as, and I'm gonna change this over into Pulsar. So we're just gonna go Pulsar, and then from text document, you wanna go all files so that we can go dot bat. Now we're going to save that and it should be in there. So we're just going to make sure we do have this installed correctly. Keep in mind, you always want to give yourself a worker name. So you're just going to put a period at the name of your, at the end of your address, like you do with every other miner and just go like rabid uh, WS, put whatever you want in that spot. Then you're going to need your password. If you plan on setting your payouts on our plant. So you're going to need this command here. 
Uh, we're going to get rid of X and we're actually going to use the config that they have in here. So we're going to copy what they want us to use from our plan. So it is web password equals password. Now where I have password here is the password you actually got to put in. So whatever you want your password to be, this is where you put it that I have highlighted. I'll try and change that around your password here or something in the description just to make it a little bit easier for you. One thing I do notice with SRB Miner is that when you're running full threads and everything, it does kind of use more resources than other miners so example like your computer might feel like it's starting to lag out or something so you may want to limit some threads if you do plan on using other programs or anything else in the background if it's on your workstation or something so using the command right here you can alter it by going dash dash cpu dash threads space 28 this is a 5950x so it is 32 threads and i can limit it to 28 threads now what i'm actually going to do here is I'm gonna save as, I'm gonna call it Pulsar and call it 28. That way I do know it is 28 threads version. Again, you're gonna need all files and then save. Now I'm gonna go into here just to make sure it's saved correctly. So here we can see Pulsar 28 and just normal Pulsar. So if I edit this, we can see the password is not here, but the 28 one does have it. If that's confusing you, then you know, um, you can try to do something else, name them both something else, whatever you want. It's just that when I find if you're going to bed or something for the night, you can run the full thread version. If you plan on running your CPU and you need your computer, then you just shut down your miner and then run the 28 version thread. So right here, I'm going to show you. I'm going to load it up. Stop. Don't do this. Oh, you can see right here I failed. I didn't put the dot bat. That's why that popped up. So we're going to resave it again, save as. But again, all files dot bat so there's a nice uh i messed up and you got to see it so right on so now you can see what happens if you don't actually do that so now you can see we have a pulsar and a pulsar 28 and i'm just going to delete the one that isn't actually a bat file and now we're going to double click pulsar 28 again we're automatically running as admin because that was the first step we did and we'll see it here it is loading 28 threads for cpu mining where if i close this out now you know i'm going to bed or something i'm going to load this one now instead and you'll see it is going to run all 32 threads. So now all, all 32 threads are running. You're all set up and ready to roll. So I do like to use multiple bat files. Like if I'm making a thumbnail or editing a video or something, I do run this one. And then, then if I'm going to bed, I don't plan on using my computer for a while. I'll run the other one. All right, guys. So that is the Windows 10 version. Now I'm going to show you how to set this up in Hive OS. And the first thing you are going to have to do is create your wallet. So we're going to click on wallets here. We're going to add our wallet and you're going to type in your coin ticker here. Now it doesn't, it isn't automatically in Hive OS itself. So you're going to have to create this token. So you're going to go PLSR or whatever you want. I already have it. So you're going to click on that. It's going to say create. So I'll show you what happens if there is no coin. So I'm going to go put Pulsar and it'll say create Pulsar. So it'll create it and then you'll get what I get. We'll move on to the next step here. So PLSR. Uh, now you're going to enter your address here, your uh, wallet name here, which would be PLSR, which I have, or Pulsar, whatever you want to call it is what you call it. And you're done with your wallet. It'll be there forever. Now for setting up your flight sheet, which is pretty much doing everything you did in Windows in that bat file uh, using SRB Miner. But here it's a little bit easier, more straightforward. So we're going to go to edit here. I'm just going to run through what I get here. So you're going to go in here. It's going to be blank when you create a new one. You're just going to pick your Pulsar coin, so PLSR click on it you obviously the wallet whatever you named it will pop up here now as for pool there is nothing in here by default so you're going to configure that in the miner itself and then you're going to select here and select srb miner so i'm going to hit my setup config everything will be done within the miner itself now you're going to start at the top work your way down make sure it does say curve hash if it doesn't you're just going to click on it put in a c and keep typing in curve and still curve until curve hash pops up Next, if wallet isn't here, just make sure you click on the wallet right here. I'm going to get rid of it. Actually, we'll just pretend it's blank. Boom, I have my wallet in now. Exact same thing here. If there's no worker name in there, you're just going to click worker name like so. Now, this is where you just got to copy over from our plant itself. So we're going to go back into our plant here. We're going to grab that stratum, copy it over, come back into our flight sheets, and you're just going to paste that into this line right here. And the exact same thing for the password if you plan on, you know, running and changing your payout. So we're just going to copy this web password equals password. Take that out of here. Paste it in there. And again, remember, equals is where your password is. So it's going to be 
your password here. So this is where your password is going to be. But you do have to have web password equals for our plant. If you just put in a normal password, it won't work for you. So remember, copy that in there. And this after the equals will be the password you need. And that's it. You just apply your changes and then run your flight sheet and you should be up and mining to our plant. Now earlier I did say you can use CPU miner opt our plant fork and the reason i didn't i do like it. it's less resourceful to your computer so you can run full threads and still do background applications in windows and whatnot but the only issue i was having if you go into windows or even in hive os so you'll see like your cpu will start pulling out like 90 giga hash 1400 kilo hash like crazy high numbers but at the pool it is saying all of these numbers right here so srb minor is more accurate in terms of reporting but overall i think you still get the same hash rates at the pool so now we're going to look into the actual staking of this coin and it is pretty cool as works unlike other coins where you have to take your coins transfer it to a staking node or you know a staking provider or anything it's all done right here within your wallet from the coins that you're mining. So for an example, the first step you are gonna have to do though, you're gonna have to encrypt your wallet. So do the encryption process, it'll ask for a password and everything, and then you're gonna have to unlock your wallet. So I'm gonna close this out, reopen it, and show you uh, why it must be unlocked. Okay, so I just reopened my wallet again, and it's saying staking suspended due to locked wallet. So obviously I already have the encryption process, everything done, but every time you open it, you are gonna have to unlock that wallet. So once you click the unlock, it's going to ask for your passphrase. I'm going to put mine in right quick here. Uh, so like so. And just hit enter and it unlocks your wallet. Now it'll begin connecting to peers. Right here, I am already have four active connections to the Pulsar network. It goes up to like 30, 35. Uh, I think the highest I seen was about 35 and sometimes it drops down. So I'm really not sure what's all happening there but i am unlocked and i am now staking so based on my coins that i have in here the more and more coins you have in your wallet is like the more and more hash rate you have whether it's cpus to a cpu mining coin or gpus on a gpu mining coin the coins act as like more hash rate and that's where the 50 percent proof of stake does come in if we go to mining pool stats and we look at pulsar coin as we can see there's 84 percent of the hash rate is on our plant that's absolutely insane but if you scroll down, you'll see 42% is from our plant and 49% is from unknown. And you can see there's 117 mega hash on the network or on the, you know, CPU mining side. But on the network, there's 2.4 terahash. So at first I was like, what's going on? Is GPUs mining this too? Where's all this other hash rate? And this hash rate is actually all the stakers on the pool. So what's going on is here is the proof of stake side is also technically mining and trying to find those blocks as well. So if you end up finding a block, you get the full block reward, which is that 90 Pulsar coins. So each block reward is worth 90. And you know, just from holding coins and the more and more coins that you get from mining, the more and more blocks in theory you should get. But remember everyone out there as well is doing this. So this could turn into a difficulty like, you know, how Chia did and, you know, blowing up all those plots on Chia and hard drives. This network difficulty obviously will keep going up, up and away based on everyone mining the coins and keeping their wallet open. Now, remember, your wallet does have to stay open. You can't close it. So you go to bed, you shut something down or something. You make sure your computer is on and your wallet is staying active in order for that staking to keep going. I don't believe there is a minimum amount for staking your coins. Uh, but again, you know, the more you have, the better chance you have at finding that block. Uh, earlier this morning, someone did find a block with only 200 and some coins in there. So I believe according to Discord, that's the lowest amount that has been found so far. But it is recommended to have at least 2,500 to 4,000 for an average of one block per day. All right, guys. So that pretty much does sum up this video. So hopefully you're up in mining Pulsar now. And, you know, let me know in the comments, what do you think of this coin? I don't have too much information on it. I did forget to mention that this coin is pretty much brand new. It launched January 31st of 2022. So keep that in mind. This thing is brand new. Who knows what could happen? 100% spec mining. But, you know, always, you know, the future is the sky's the limit, I guess, right? So could we have big potential? We might not. No idea. Too soon to tell. But here's another coin that you can mine on your CPUs as well as just holding it in the wallet, keeping it open. You're staking it as well. So 
I believe it's currently sit around one cent, so that's actually not too bad for profitability. But as more and more you guys continue to start joining it and start mining it, that difficulty will increase and those daily yields will begin to fall down. Thanks for watching this video, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Rabbit out. Thank you for watching my video, and if you haven't seen one of these, be sure to check them out. And if you already seen them, maybe you missed some, might have to watch it one more time. And if you just let it play in the background, that's all right as well. I do try to live stream every weekend as well as every couple days during the week. So be sure to be subscribed so you don't miss that. As always, have a great day.